Life Cycle of Making is an installation that shows the evolution of ideas by arranging experiments and artworks and inspirations as a map in the order they happened. These stages of the creative process have very different characters and this project combines showing how ideas grow and evolve as they pass through them with what it's like to experience them from a maker's point of view. The Oxford English Dictionary gives a definition of inspiration as the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially to do something creative. For me, that often starts with looking. It might start small, but it grows and intensifies until looking becomes noticing. The stripes of this feather go through the quill as well as the fluff, when normally the quill stays plain however busy the pattern is on either side. Noticing becomes scrutinising. And scrutinising becomes investigating. Put in enough interesting things and inspiration starts to pop up. A sort of lift-off or firing up of metaphors. Some feathers are a version of how we wear clothes. The pattern or the coloured iridescent bits are on the end that shows, while the fluffy thermal underwear is next to the skin for warmth. This is a section of peacock feather, where half's been replaced to the bit of pea hen. Not refined, a first attempt. The idea seemed to just pop up, but probably had its root in musing on why male and female feathers are so different. Some inspirations pop up out of frustration lapsing into words to describe the detailed transitions and taperings of a feather frond that's so perfect it's hard to imagine how any interpretation of it in making could be relevant. Wishing that wire was already tapered led to using a needle to represent the tip of a feather frond. There's something rather organic about the way ideas can have a second growth stage. An evolved and more refined inspiration phase compared with an absolute beginning. Threading an needle with wire as a way of adding a flowing line instead of using thread which just hangs down. This was a last attempt in the search for ways to represent tapering through lashing together diminishing gauges of wire. I think the steps at the end of each wire were annoying me and I bent them to try to hide it. Suddenly, feather mechanism suggests a method for spider leg choreography. Inspiration often pops up in a way that feels out of the blue. But really, although it feels sudden and unexpected, each inspiration has its roots firmly in previous research and experiments. Making slow and linear compared to the quick, multiple complexity of thoughts. Fluffy. Sharp. Tapered. Choosing an aspect 
and describing it with different materials and methods. At its best, it's investigative making, where the process of translation leads to a deeper, richer level of noticing and understanding. But, of course, there's loads of failures and dead ends that need an uncritical space to be allowed to happen to get themselves out of the way. Doing just enough of an attempt to see round the corner and decide if it's worth going on. Leaning towards the edge of familiar techniques to evolve them. Or wading into the unknown in hope of finding something there. Each attempt perches on a stack of all the previous efforts. Reaching back in time and ranging from exciting to horrible and everything in between. When one looks promising, inspiration fires up. Experiments and inspiration work together. The madly enthusiastic visions are balanced by the reality of practical tests and trials before getting too carried away and rushing into production. I get nervous. Knowing I'm working on a final piece and there's no room for any more practice and missing the freedom of experimenting. I need tunnel vision to do a lot of my making. It's quite rigorous and gruelling. I'm often at the edge of my eyesight and my making ability and it can be both boring and stressful at the same time. There's great satisfaction in finding flow and rhythm and feeling the making fitness grow and develop for a particular situation. Only a few ideas make it to the finish. And it isn't always the ones I love the most. Many favourites stay at the sample stage for years. An intriguing thought ingenious in the way it's made, with some aspect of contrast or paradox that brings out the flavours in it. All these elements need to be present to make the effort of resolving a piece worthwhile. Focusing on the structure of a flower, instead of being diverted by the beauty of the petals, the wire in the needles becomes the bones of a chrysanthemum made by a laborious process of threading various sizes of needle with different gauges of wire, and always needing many more than I thought. The frame, the plinth, or the head it goes on, needs to give the work a moment of isolation and context to show itself to the viewer. Pieces can levitate and hover and balance in my mind, but it's hard to make it happen in reality. 
this whole project is certainly an example of that. Finished work's naturally seen in isolation, but in reality, it fits between the deep roots of the trials that led up to it and the inspirations that spark up from it. Each inspiration in my making has its roots in previous experiments and research, but they're hidden in its past. Some of the magic of other people's work is not seeing the roots, not seeing the method of the conjuring trick and wondering about it. Even though I suspected it, I've been surprised by just how tightly interwoven the stages of making are. It's hard to describe them separately, as they're constantly morphing into each other. They behave more in the way colours work in the spectrum, always grading into and leading on from each other in their particular order. The parts of the process that are hidden are still following the pattern of the life cycle of making. Inspirations are often thought of as a beginning, but mine often really gets going at the end of a project. I found a cat's whisker. All this thinking about the fronds of feathers tapering. Now this is perfect tapering. Why are they so thin at the end? I wonder how many sheds and door frames it's brushed against. What does it feel like to have whiskers?